Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the North American Star League, <laughs> Star Team League. Excuse me. <laughs> um, we have Team Liquid going up against Quantic, and right now Team Liquid is up 2-0. And this is a critical moment for Quantic. I mean, they've brought their heavy hitter, Sase, currently mm -hmm. living in Korea because their backs are against the wall. They're thinking to themselves, we're down 2-0. This is a must-win situation. Exactly. And we say it's must-win because this is actually four matches. You play four 1v1s, okay? And it's different different players going up against each of them. Um, and if you you finish it out 3-1, then it's over. 3-0. 3-0, 3-1. The first to um, three is the winner. The first to winner. three, exactly. But obviously you're saying, well, some people can win two, and some people can win two, and then you're 2-2, two -two, right? Then you have an ace match. Then you have an ace match where <laughs> ace each match. team chooses any of the players. It could be a player that already played, and they go into a best of three series, loser chooses map. And then that's going to, to resolve the entire tournament. So, or the entire clan war, I should say. So right now, that's why we say this is a must-win situation, even though there could be one more match after this. If, let's say, um, Liquid does lose this, uh, they, they can win it still with a 3-1 score. But right. if they lose two in a row, then we will Dun -dun. go to the ace match. Yep. And so, again, Sauce Sauce has really got to do it, and I guess let's just start the game. Yep, so we do have, looks like, Liquid TLO up against Quantic Sauce. And the map is Antigua Sheepyard. Yeah. And, um, you know, TLO switched back to Zerg a couple months ago. He's basically been bouncing around every race, although he's definitely favored Terran and Zerg much more than Protoss. I can't imagine... Actually, I can't really remember many times when he's really picked gone full Protoss. No, I don't actually ever remember that, other than the beta when he was complete random. Um, I do want to say this is NASL's Metalopolis for season number two. I'll show NASL you the difference. Or, did I really say Metalopolis? Yeah. All right. Well, there's destructible rocks in the middle everywhere. As you can see, <laughs> the whole map, the whole is, map destructible is just rocks. destructible rocks. <laughs> you actually have to destroy the rocks on the path to your opponent. Yeah, armor is 49. Really Ar armor is 49. <laughs> just troll the crap out of people. That would be a really funny game, actually. You literally have like a two-player map, and there's one path to your opponent, but the whole path is destructible rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Banshee rush, easy. <laughs> and somehow, ban like a, a, a anti-Banshee trigger is enabled on the map, so you can't build any flying units. Anyways, um, yeah, Zerg screwed, man. <laughs> yeah, so this is a slightly different version of Antica Shipyard, um, and yeah, we do see a spawning pool coming from TLO. It looks like Sasai is gonna go for a fast Nexus, which I like quite a bit, especially given that this map is cross position only, so you know where your opponent's gonna be. Um, and generally speaking, a Protoss confident in his abilities can safely fast Nexus. Wow, <coughs> 17 supply before the Nexus. This is kind of interesting. Normally, you do go 17 supply, and then you just stop there. You can get your uh, your Nexus. Well, not normally, I should say. It's a variation. You can get your Nexus and then your Forge directly after that. He's actually going up to 18 probes. Wow. Yeah, uh, so it's that's kind of an interesting build. Kind of oh, okay. Oh, he's There's got the, the pylon. The pylon. Ah. Gotcha. Yeah. So what that pylon does... Oh, wow, he actually puts on the hatcher. He actually canceled the pylon as well, so a lot of stuff going on in this early game stage. But um, but you can see a forge end gateway is put down immediately. He can do this. Now, he will be supply capped for quite a long time, but what he's basically said is, I'm going to make the Nexus slightly later, but my forge end gateway is going to be slightly earlier if I did something like a 16, 16, uh, forge, or 16 Nexus, something like that. And uh, I will be defended much much better uh, if there are any any early you know Zergling plays right like that. and I like the decision of Sasai to wall back here I think a, a lot of players try to wall by their choke and I think it's a really difficult wall to pull off just because of the amount of ground you have to cover with that yeah. right now Sas has created a very very narrow choke and pathway for his opponent to get in and that's really good if you're expecting a lot of early early pressure from your opponent for sure oh my god TLO has gotten his third hatchery at four minutes and 30 seconds you madman you and this is a very TLO thing to do to just you know he, TLO is Without a doubt, one of the more creative players in the community. I don't think yeah. I don't think anyone would uh, would deny that. TLO, Kiwi, Kaki are the two most creative players, in my opinion. I agree. 
And now, so, yeah. Sasai already knows that this expansion is up. Uh, an important thing is he's probably going to assume that this natural expansion is going to be taking as well. So uh, what this actually means, in my opinion, is Sasai should be doing some sort of timing. Uh, or at least that's what I would do. I would say, okay, well, your expansion is so spread out at this point, you don't have a lot of, of units to cover it. If I go something like, you know, Warp Prison Play plus some sort of aggression, we've seen that a lot from... Uh, actually, Liquid's, Liquid Hero, we've yep. seen that a lot from him. I think some sort of timing play or <coughs> even Stargate play would be the thing to go to just because even Stargate play, you can go ahead and charge up on these destructible debris and just start bearing down on this expansion. Right. And I think TLO has done a great job dropping creep tumors because I think ASAP wants to connect these three bases, bec especially because... Going so fast, uh, three bases so quickly in the game really makes you vulnerable to a timing attack from Protoss. So you want to connect those bases as soon as possible so you can be able to reinforce and defend yourself as best you yeah. can. And Sase looks like he is going for four gateways right now. Uh, I'm going to see if he's going to have if he's going to put down the fifth and sixth, which would indicate. A very, very aggressive two base timing. Uh, well, the four gate still indicates a pretty aggressive timing. When you go four gate, it just means it's coming a lot quicker. Right. Um, and, and it's because you don't save up for that 600 minerals and then, uh, or 750 minerals and then spend it all at once. That's normally what you do when you do six gate or something like that. Um, but, you know, getting the four gate, what this means is that you can chrono boost out the, the warp gate a lot faster. Well, you can chrono boost it at normal times, but still. When you need to save up for so many minerals for all those gateways, you tend to, you know, just go more uh, economic. In 4-gate, you don't need so much economy, so all your chrono boosts can go towards warp gates, and they can go towards gateways. It makes it a lot faster, and this push co should come out relatively soon. There you go. Sase is already going. This is going to be actually quite difficult, I think, for Tilo to stop, uh, yeah, because his road behind this... Done. Look at this. Behind this, he's going for a robotics facility and a, a Twilight Council. This, this is going to be tech... Or pressure behind tech. Nope. Right. Other way around. Tech, tech behind, behind pressure. pressure. There you go. But yeah, um, I totally agree from this, uh, from Sase's build right now. It's pretty strong. He's going to be putting a lot of pressure on TLO, and TLO is really not going to be able to get more economy going. Usually on three base, you know, Zerg wants to get up to like 70. Ooh, really good job by TLO to kill that pylon from being built. Uh-oh. And yeah, TLO is really preemptively pulling his drones. I, I, I like that reaction time a lot. He kind of realized that the attack was coming and, you know, he made sure that he didn't take a lot of losses. He's going to have to see if Sase can... Ooh, nice force field there by Sase. So he's going to be able to take down most of these roaches. Yep, but uh, very critically, actually, TLO was able to snipe off those sentries. Those are the key components that actually give him the ability to take out this one hatchery. So these roaches can actually kite all day long. TLO with some amazing micro here. He's going to kite these and even save these two roaches back here. Is it going to be enough time though? He needs to take out that hatchery for this to be worth it in my opinion. He can't just rely on you know his opponent not mining. I don't think that's enough uh, for him to for Sase at this point. No, it's definitely not. And TLO with a really, really good hold. I think the key there was when the Zerglings uh, snaked around the back to kill that pylon from being built because Sase couldn't reinforce his units. Yeah. I mean, if he had if he had been able to get two more warp ins uh, from there, I think he would have been able to hold and probably kill that third. But as it stands, Tilo had a really good defense, and uh, oh, and Sase kind of Tilo actually supply captain still not getting an overlord. Yeah. Uh, it's he's been supply captain for a very long time, and you know, just like that, I think this is actually going to even things up. Uh, maybe not even things up, but Sase, you know, doesn't have to worry nearly as much as before just because, obviously, not having so many drones. Let's go ahead and look at the income depth. 48 to 56, they're pretty close together, in my opinion. Right. And TLO could actually now, have, like, 130 supply right now exactly. if he didn't get capped. It, he could be very, very high. Yeah, but look at the supplies even. 88 to 99, that's not normally what we see. In no, I Whoa, think... In PvZ. Yeah, definitely not. Um, Sase, definitely in that in that attack, he definitely did not get what he wanted to get out of that. He kind of lost quite a bit of units. He didn't really do much other than delay TLO mining his third for about two minutes. Um, so I mean, that does set TLO back a little bit, as you know, as you saw. You know, he was probably preoccupied with with that attack. He didn't build overlords, so it kind of slowed him down. But again, um, Sase is going to be moving out. I like this push out from Sase. 
uh, the constant pressure, punishing your opponent. I think right now, Sase was thinking, well, you're going to probably be droning at this point just because I did a lot of exchanges with that early stage. You have to make a lot of units. So I'm going right. to punish you right now. It's a little bit risky just because he has no observers around the field to actually know this for sure. But, uh, you know, I think overall it's good theory. And with the Immortal Heavy Army, <coughs> he thinks he's going up against just Zergling Roach, which he is correct at this point. I it's the perfect army composition. Yeah, no, Sase is playing this very, very well. And behind this, obviously, he's taking third. So, again, um, for anybody who really uh, wants to learn how to play StarCraft correctly, this is one of the most basic tenets of kind of yeah. higher-level play is that you really want to take expansions while you apply some sort of pressure to your opponent. Really nice four seals there by Sase. Ouch. And this is actually a very bad position for TLO. He needs to snake around and get a nice flank. But I think Sase is going to be able to get some even better force fields, and he's really doing a great job of segmenting Teal's army. Yep, here we go, the, the big push, and wow. there's drones and a couple Zerglings and Roaches from the bottom side, but it's just not enough because the top was actually force shielded out. This hatchery is going to be targeted down, it looks like, and yes, it will go down. The Roach is finally getting through on that top edge, but it's not going to be enough. There's so much sentry energy, and he's able to force shield yet again, so it basically negates everything. That uh, that TLO is able to do big blink forward, and Ooh, he's going to be able to get, get taken ton. out. And this is not a good position for Richards. TLO at all. Even though TLO had a very nice advantage, um, Sase just used great force fields and good positioning. And oh wow, man. TLO GG's really quickly there. So there you have it. TLO is going to fall. Sase wins that game. I think. Uh, we were talking about before that supply cap probably was yeah the 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 bane of TLO yeah bane of TLO I mean he just fell flat in his face when that happened and, and it's such a shame because he had such good momentum coming out from that he, he uh, obviously had yeah exactly he had his third still up his opponents uh, pushed didn't do anything really and then he supply cap forever yeah. supply cap forever his opponent just pushed out again. And he was still drone pumping because he was supply cap before that. Yep. And I think, I mean, really, if you look at the army counts when Sase pushed out, he, it was about 108 supply, I think, to about 130 from TLO. Mm -hmm. And without getting supply cap, TLO probably would have been over at like 160, 170 in that range. Yeah. And Which that he would have crushed that army units, from, from Sase. But it, as it stands, you know, Sase pushed at the right time. Uh, he had less units, obviously, because of the failed push earlier. But because TLO got supply capped, you know, Sase was able to, you know, use really good force fields and positioning yeah. and win that battle. And I think t critically, I mean, I know I was watching TLO the whole time as well. I didn't get to get to it, but um, TLO was actually going Mutas, I believe. He got the Spire tech going. I don't think he was going for, like, a Corruptor-based army just to to negate some sort of Colossus tech just because Colossus tech has kind of dwindled off a little bit in PvZ in that mid-game stage. We don't see that as much. But yeah, he, he went for the Spire tech. I, he was very light on Zerglings and Roaches, which makes me believe that it was saving up for, for Muta tech. And right. obviously hitting right before Muta tech comes out, he pushed out right when Spire finished. Yeah. And and uh, uh, Mutas are not good at denying a denying No, a and uh, of course, there's just a, a bad timing too. Yeah. If, he ha if he had the Mutas... You know, two minutes earlier, for example, he could have used them to delay the push to exactly. you know, do some more damage. But it was yeah. the perfect storm for a perfect push, so it gives Sase the uh, the win over there. He puts Quantic on the board, yep. so they're one-two right now. We're going to go into our fourth match after this. Everybody, stay tuned.